Good morning, St. Paul's. Welcome to our online worship service. Glad that you have joined us this morning. Just a few announcements as we get started. I hope that you have jumped on the Zoom call. At the end of this worship time together, we will spend, spend kind of have a virtual coffee hour together on Zoom. So if you could hang out there, also make sure that you are muted. I'm going to do the best job I can to make sure everybody's muted as well. So please do that. And then at the end of our worship service together, we will have a time where we can just fellowship together on Zoom. Uh, if you're not on Zoom currently, there's a link on Facebook that you can click on to jump on with us, to fellowship with us. We'll spend a little bit of time together on that Zoom call afterwards. We'd love for you to join us. Also, I am doing a virtual membership class next su Sunday af afternoon at noon uh, for about an hour. If you'd love uh, more information about St. Paul's uh, and you would love to find out what it means to become a member, even when we physically can't be together, we're still going to do that. Also, keep your eye out. I will uh, look to start an online Bible study in the coming uh, days as we head into this new season of ministry together. One more announcement for you. Uh, we're going to take communion virtually together. And so I'd encourage you to uh, go find some juice, go find a piece of bread. Later on in the service, we will use the communion elements together and I will bless them virtually and we will partake together here on, on, on camera. I think it could be a powerful moment for us as a community to connect in the Lord's Supper in a virtual Find way. That we are going to have somewhat a very similar liturgy as we do here in the sanctuary at St. Paul's. And so I would love for you to just kind of follow along. There's going to be opportunities for you to sing, sing at home with your family. There's going to be opportunities for you to pray the Lord's Prayer, to recite the Creed. Uh, join us in that as well from, from your seat. Uh, as you would here in the sanctuary if this was alive in person. So join us in worship. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you, as a day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forevermore will be. Come! Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Join us in singing together.
based off of Psalm 23.4, I will fear no evil. Father, the evil around me can be consuming and overwhelming. As I watch the news and look at events happening all around me, I can go into panic mode at times. Would you free me from the fear of evil? Would you give me the incredible victory over the evil that encom encompasses me? And would you flood my heart with courage? In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul 
She leads me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even through I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. John 9, 1 through 7. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. His followers asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused this man to be born blind? His own sin or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, It is not the man's sin or his parents' sin that made him blind, be blind. This man was born blind so that God's power could be shown in him. While it is daytime, we must continue doing the work of the one who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with it and put the mud on the man's eyes. Then he told the man, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. So the man went, washed, and came back seeing. Hey kids, time for a little kid sermon video. Pastor Matt here, going to take a walk in the dark. This week our topic is on taking a walk in the dark. The other day I asked my kids, they were afraid of the dark. And they all kind of hesitantly either nodded or my son Gideon cried out, yes, I'm scared of the dark, daddy. And I know many times I've been afraid of the dark. In darkness, it's hard to see, right? It's hard to know what's there. There's always something lurking and it feels like chaos because we are out of control. We have lost control. So my question for you today, kids, is are you afraid of the dark? And why are we afraid of the dark? Because there's unknown, there's uncertainty about it. Here I am, a Milltown path. It's dark out. But it's never completely dark. It says in Genesis chapter 1 that 
that God separated the light from the darkness and God brought light to the darkness. And it's in the light, the light that guides us. And so here in the path, it's never completely dark, right? You can still kind of see the tower, the water tower and the smokestack there. And on this path, we have little lights to guide us, to guide us on the, the way so that we can kind of see where we are going. And in many ways, Jesus is like this light. Jesus lights the path for us so that we can see. So uh, when you're laying in bed at night and you feel afraid, you could actually talk to Jesus. You can look to Jesus to help you. He will comfort you. And there will be times in life where darkness will come, metaphorically speaking, or tough times will come or you'll be mad or angry or depressed or down or fearful. And just like when you're laying in bed at night, I tell my kids just to ask Jesus to help them. You can ask Jesus to help you in the dark parts of your life. That Jesus is always there to be your guide, to give you a light on your path. And when you walk down the dark path, when you take a walk in the dark, you don't know what might get you. It could be, right now I'm afraid, maybe there's a skunk that wants to come out and spray me. Or maybe a raccoon looking for garbage to eat. You never know what might be there. But you stay close to the light. You walk slowly. Because if I walk too fast in the dark, what will happen? I might trip and fall because there's a stick that I can't see. And so we go slowly, we're more focused, we, we follow the light that guides us because the light will guide you home and the light is Jesus. And so I want you kids to remember that today, that when you're going through difficult times or dark times in life, that Jesus will always be the light to guide you back home, to keep you comforted, to give you peace, to give you love, and to give you joy. Amen, amen. Take a moment and pray the prayer that Jesus gave us that that so many years ago that are so comforting to those who are going through a walk in the dark. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together now. Amen. Let's pray the prayer the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The early church had many creeds, many things they would recite regularly so they would remember the truth of Scripture in their hearts. So with that, let's now recite the Apostles' Creed together. Confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty. here to pray together, to enter into, into God's presence uh, through prayer. Prayer is our weapon in the kingdom of God. Prayer is our, is our weapon against this COVID-19 crisis. Prayer 
is what gives us peace. Prayer is what calms us. Prayer is how we participate in what God is up to. And God wants us to pray. If you don't know what to do during this time, it's to pray. So let's take a few moments together to pray. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our brothers and sisters throughout this world who live and die in poverty and pain. Give them today through our hands their daily bread and through our understanding love. Give them peace and joy. Amen. God, we lift up all those who are struggling today with the coronavirus. We know that many in our community are suffering with this illness. God, I pray that you'll bring full healing to them. God, I pray that you'll bring full calm and full peace. God, we do lift up all those serving in our armed forces as well as they struggle with the same shutdowns and lockdowns and fears and anxieties, but also have uh, fears and anxieties uh, around being deployed in, in, different, in different situations. And so, God, I pray, pray for them. God, I pray for all those in our midst that are struggling with uh, physical ailments, uh, recovering from surgeries, fighting cancer. God, I pray that you'll bring healing. And God, those uh, that you bring to mind to us right now, God, we lift them up to you and their needs. And God, we lift up each one watching this video now that you would pour your spirit upon them, God. You'll pour your love in each home that, that is watching this feed this morning. God, we pray that, that your peace will overwhelm uh, each mind, each heart today. God, in those dark moments where we get frustrated, we get fearful, God, I pray that you'll be especially real, especially powerful in, those, in the midst of that, that you will speak to us words of love that we know it's you and, and, and that we'll understand that it's you, God. I pray those that are beginning to follow you for the first time, God, that you'll draw, continue to draw them to yourselves, God, that that people will truly begin to walk in your light as you guide them home to you. God, we, we pray the sermon that you preached, that blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the hungry, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness and justice, for great is their reward. Come, Holy Spirit, come now. We pray that your fruit would be in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self, self Dear Jesus, help us to spread your fragrance everywhere we go in this time where we aren't going very far. May your fragrance be spread through the, this media feed, through our interactions digitally, God. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of, blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you, from the malicious enemy. Defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Through, through our lives and by our prayers, may your kingdom come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to pause to reflect on all that Christ has given us, even 
as we've had a lot of things taken away from us during this season, uh, our normal routines, our normal rhythms, some of us maybe even jobs or our health. Uh, but we want to continue to worship God through our giving. Even though we're not physically present, we still want to honor God with the gifts that he has given us. In the midst of these struggles, God is present. In times of grief, in times of weariness and tragedy, God weeps with us. When we fail to be the people, we know we should. When we sin, God's grace envelops us. God beckons us to live within God's unfolding realm of love. As the virtual offering plate is passed around, you'll see a link posted to give online, or you can mail a check here to the church. Respond to, in openness to all that we have been given. And this, this church has given so much to this community. We want to continue to give back to this community. We want to continue to serve and shepherd and, and spread the love of Jesus in the heart of this community. And it's through your gifts that we're able to do that. And there's so many uh, that are struggling and so many more that will struggle in, in the coming days and weeks and, and even months ahead. And so we want to be positioned to be able to help those in need. And so your gifts enable us to do that. And and this act of worship of, of, of our offering is not just our financial offering, but it's also to remind us of our, of our gifts. And maybe you don't have the finances right now to give, but maybe you could serve the church in some way and, and, and use your gifts to, to honor God. And so we want uh, this time to be an offering not only of our resources, our financial resources, but also of our talent resources and our time resources and give back to God. And let us praise God for the gifts that have been given and will be given together through our doxology. I hope that you have enjoyed the different elements uh, that we've put in this service. Uh, we'll continue to try to do similar things in the weeks ahead as we have, at least for the next couple weeks, we'll be having services here in the online form. And so if you'd like uh, to share anything with us, there's a video that God's put on your heart you, using your gifts and talents like we mentioned at the offering time, if you have a skill to play an instrument or to sing a song, we'd love to have that. Uh, we know that it's special when we see something from our community go up on, on our Facebook and website. And so uh, there's lots of opportunities, not only through our hour together here for our online service, but also opportunities throughout the week. As, you'll, as, you, as you've seen, uh, we have different things going on throughout the week that that are online, that are digital, that we could use content for. So by all means, if you have a prayer that's on your heart, a special word, a special song, please reach out to Emily or I so that we could get that content and find the appropriate place to throw it up for the world to see. We'd love to, to share that with people. Today's sermon is, is called Walking in the Dark. We're in a season of life where we're all taking a walk in the dark together. Uh, over the summer, I had the great opportunity to go spend a, a few days with the monks in upstate New York, a very powerful time. It was a, every summer I take a silent retreat for a couple days to get along with God and just reflect and be with Him. In this retreat center, they actually pray the hours. They, they pray five different times a day. They pray throughout the day. And the, and the first one of the day is called the vigils. And the vigils is at 3.30 a.m. And so I was on this retreat. It was a silent retreat. And really the only time you're able to talk is when you got to, to sing in their worship services at, at their prayer kind of services. And so I wanted to experience what it was like to get up at 3 a.m. and take a walk. Uh, our retreat house that we stayed in was a, a mile walk uh, from the sanctuary. 
And it was a walk in the dark. 3 a.m. walk is, is pitch black outside. And really, and so I wanted to experience what it was like to walk in the dark. And so I didn't want to use the flashlight on my phone as much as possible and just walk and experience what was there. And so as I'm walking, the, the moonlight, I noticed, and the stars were, were extremely bright and guided the path. And there was one point in the path where we had to turn up towards the sanctuary, and the sanctuary was surrounded by a dark forest. And to be honest, I got a bit nervous before I walked in the dark forest, much like, um, you know, that Milltown Pond path that I walked down in the dark. You know, I, I was mostly fearful of skunks, right? <laughs> of, a, of me startling a skunk and then getting sprayed by the skunk or, or maybe scaring a raccoon. Any, any kind of critter that was lurking there, I didn't want to see. But, and so I had the, the best, I, you know, I'm, now the moon and the stars weren't guiding me, but the light to the sanctuary was guiding me and guiding the path. And th- there was a lot that I, that I learned that, that I wanted to see. I wanted to get there. But I knew if I rushed it, right, if I rushed too fast and went too fast through there, I could trip over a root or a log or or get off the trail and and get into the underbrush that I didn't want to be in. And so I had to to move slowly. I had to to keep my eyes focused on that light at the end of the forest, at the end of the path, to guide me. And that's much like it is when we're walking in the dark now. That there's guidance, that our eyes begin to focus more clearly. In times like this, we we become hyper-focused. And we want our hyper-focus to be focused on the light of Jesus. And so I want to talk about that. How do we we walk in the dark? Our worth is not measured by how well we're able to keep doubt at a distance. I don't know about you, but I've been feeling some doubt during this season. I've been feeling some fear. Your worth is not measured by how much... You can keep fear and anxiety at a distance. Thank God for that, right? Doubt and walking in the dark are not a sign of lack or not a sign that we did something wrong. This is not God's punishment upon the world. This is just an expected part of our journey. If you felt these feelings of fear, of chaos, of anxiety, of stress, These are normal. And Genesis chapter 1 gives us some hope in all of this. And I want to read it to you. First few verses of the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. The word used for formless and empty in this text is actually this word called tohu vavahu. It's a, say that five times fast, tohu (laughs) vavahu. Tohu vavahu is how you say it. It means, literally means formless, void, chaos. It could also mean chaotic, uh, panic, fear, anxiety. Tohu Vavahu describes what we're going through right now. And here in Genesis 1, God says, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and He separated the light from the darkness. And so God comes into this panic-stricken Lack of creation, right? This chaotic situation and brings light to it. The first thing he does is bring light. And so the light comes into the Tohu Vavahu and the light brings order into chaos. Right? The light comes to calm the panic. The light comes to take out the darkness. The light brings peace to the anxious. The light gives hope to the hopeless. The light gives strength where we are weak. And so the light gives us light, right? But the darkness isn't completely dispelled. The light brings calm, brings order, brings peace, 
gives us hope. But the darkness doesn't disappear. And God, and at the end of the creation piece, we, under, we see that God saw that it was good, right? And so darkness, necessar- this, these dark times that we go through aren't necessarily bad, but the hope that we have is that there's going to be order in the chaos. So in the midst of this, uh, we, we can see God work. It, see, walking in the dark, we lose control. That's why it's frustrating to be in the dark. In the daylight, we can see for miles on end and we can adapt. In the dark, we're at the mercy of those who can see in the dark. There is beauty all around us in the dark. And we walk in the dark. There is beauty all around us as we begin to walk in the dark. But because we are trying so hard to quickly move through the darkness, we cannot see the beauty. Right? When I was moving, so, when I was moving quickly on that hike and that walk to the sanctuary on my retreat, I, I missed some of the beauty that was around me. And it was when I slowed down in the darkness, I was able to see the beauty of the, of the moonlight bouncing off the trees and off the, the fields in front of me and, and, and off the flowers that I was walking beside. It was a different kind of beauty, but it was beauty. And there's a gift to us. The dark forest was a gift to me on the walk. And if I had avoided the dark forest, if I had chosen just to drive my car to the parking lot, <laughs> there would have been a lot that I would have missed on my, in my experience. We tend to avoid dealing with the dark. And we miss these gifts. And these gifts could be the very thing that our soul desires. You see, as we walk in the dark, there is promise of sanctuary. The juxtaposition of of rest in bed versus rest in God's presence is a very real one, right? Especially in in this time. We look for relief in the darkness. There's no way around it, and it's a good thing to look for relief. God brought relief in the, in the form of light. And, and so we find, we find relief in our beds. <laughs> we find relief in our vices. We find relief in a new hobby, in a new relationship, in our work. Whatever helps remove that darkness for a time, we, we, give, it, we give it our time. We give rest to it. Yet we have a promise in the scriptures that the divine is waiting to give us rest and be that sanctuary. That God is, is waiting. The light of Jesus is waiting to guide you to his sanctuary for his ultimate rest. That we can walk in peace and we can walk in hope. We can walk in calm even in the midst of darkness. During this COVID-19 season, it's easy to say, just say, pass me the cookies Pass me another glass of wine. Pass me another beer. Go make me some popcorn. Order another pizza. And then turn on Netflix, right? So we can drown out everything around us. Those things in and of themselves aren't bad. Look, there's nothing wrong with, with doing those things and enjoying uh, your family in that way or just, or just vegging out. But when we, we make those things the only way in which we cope with the darkness that's going on around us. We are actually missing out on the beauty of the darkness. There's beauty all around us. There's beauty in the the simple calm that a 2,000-year-old prayer brings us, the Lord's Prayer, Jesus' Prayer. It brings us calm. Or other ancient prayers that I've read online that I know and I've heard that just brings calm. And it brings me a sense of calm just to read them and pray them. There's beauty in that. Don't miss that. There's beauty in the world unifying around this goal of trying to find a, a vaccine or, or a medicine to, to combat this, right? There's beauty in that. There's beauty in businesses, local businesses and big corporate businesses doing their part to help those who don't have. And there's there's beauty in us seeing, help, seeing each other help each other out in, in any way that we can. There's actually beauty in being able to have dinner with my family every night, right? To, to see our families. To, to, there's beauty, even though there's some frustration, there's beauty in doing school with my kids. There's beauty in getting to know our spouses in a new way. And there's beauty in seeing Jesus' comfort. And the list could probably continue. You could probably add to the list the beauty that you see in this season. Don't miss it. Don't miss what the divine has for you in this season. 
But you know, because you know what? The light is there, and the light is coming to bring us home. Jesus says, as we read in the gospel reading, Silas so eloquently read for us, that he, he spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he will have light. Jesus says in, in John chapter 9, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John chapter 12, I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. John 3, there, that the light has come into the world. John 1, in him was life and the light, life was the light of men. There was a true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. And go on and on and on. And then in, and then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Apostle Paul says, Light shall shine out of darkness, and Jesus is that light. And so we see that Jesus is the light, that, the, that we won't stay in darkness, that he, even when we're taking a walk in the dark, we have the promise that Jesus is our light, and he will guide us all the way home, and we won't stay in the darkness forever, that Jesus is the light, that he brings calm. And so we see here in Genesis chapter 1 that Jesus actually is in Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 3 and 4, right? Where, when it talks about the, the light, and then Jesus is talking about himself as the light. In the, 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 the Gospel of John, John is, is rehearsing, reviewing the creation story in John chapter 1. That Jesus came to dwell, the light of life came to dwell among us. He's, he's at John, the the uh, the Gospel of John, he is actually referring back to Genesis chapter 1 here, that Jesus is this light that brings order out of chaos, that, that Jesus is the light that brings calm to the tohu vavahu. That's the beauty of the Gospel. That's the beauty of Jesus. Jesus, the light, came to dwell among us. Jesus entered into your chaos. Jesus enters into your pain. Jesus enters into your panic and your, into your fear, into your anxiety. He entered into our hopelessness. He's entered into our walk in the dark with us. He is walking with us. He enters into your weakness. When, when you are weak, He is strong. Jesus entered into our darkness to take this walk with us and to guide us home. And He carries your cross. He carries your burden. He is there with you now. And He loves you so, so, so very much. Jesus is the light. He was there in the beginning that calmed all of that chaos, that brought order when there was no order. Jesus, the eternal light, will never be extinguished. He will never be put out. Jesus comes into the tohu vahu. He enters into you. John 1.14, Jesus came and He enters into this world. He enters into your life and He wants to guide you. He is there waiting for you. Jesus wants to bring order to your chaos. Jesus, the light of life, brings order to chaos. Jesus comes and calms the panic. Jesus comes to take out the darkness. Jesus brings peace to the anxious. Jesus gives hope to the hopeless. Jesus comes to give strength where we have none. Jesus wants so badly to guide you home as we take this walk in the dark. I am so hopeful during this time of COVID-19 because I know many of you for the first time will find out who you truly are. Your truth, because your true self, who you truly are, is only found in Jesus. And Jesus is reaching out with his light to you to guide you. Don't ignore him. Follow him. There's nothing magical you need to do to follow him. Pick up a Bible, start reading it, start learning about him, talk to him through prayer, engage with others who are on the same path. There's nothing, there's no magical formula to it. It's just follow his light. See where he guides you. He wants to guide you home. And when you find yourself walking and taking a walk in the dark, because you will take another walk in the dark after this is all over, don't avoid it. Don't find ways around it. Continue to walk in the dark and look for the beauty. Look for the gifts the divine wants to give you. Look for the divine because he is the light that will guide you on that path. Look for the divine to give you rest. 
As you walk in the dark, you will find what you're truly looking for, and that's who you were truly designed to be. And that's found in the light of life, Jesus. That's where our true self is fine. In the darkness, we cannot look ahead. We, we can only look at, to ourselves. Like In the dark, if I look too far ahead, I'm going to trip. You have to stay focused on your very next steps. The walks in the dark are the times that we can see our true self most clearly. Those are the times we're most focused. In, the, in this journey of life, Embrace the darkness because it's true. It's in the darkness that we can truly see the light of life. We can see the, the light of the divine. And it's that light where we find our way home. May we be a people who believe in Jesus as the light of life. May we pursue Jesus, the true light of life, and leave behind all those other things that keep us stuck in the darkness. The light of the divine will get you home. Amen. Amen. Before we partake of the communion elements, the Apostle Paul tells us that uh, before we enter into the presence of God through the partaking of the elements, that we confess any sin known or unknown to God. And so I'm going to walk us through a, a liturgical confession and allow for a silent prayer of confession as we close to, for you guys to lift up anything to God that you need to get off your chest to Him. So let us go before God and confess. Join with me in, in, in this confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May we all be strengthened in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. I trust that you're able to find some communion elements and we want to go to the Lord's table together. Despite the fact that we're not together physically, we still want to partake of Christ's elements. And I don't think... Jesus, when he shared his meal, he took the, the two most common elements that was at a dinner table in, in those days, and that was bread and that was the wine, to talk about his uh, covenant with us. And so whatever you have at home, whether it's a different kind of juice or maybe if it's just water, it's okay because that's kind of what Jesus did is he took what was before him and use it as a teaching lesson. And he invites us to partake together. And so Jesus, on the night he's betrayed, he took the bread and he said, this is my body given for you. Th this, this bread is a symbol of, of Jesus coming in the flesh and entering into our pain, entering into our heartache, enter entering into our anxiety, our fears, our stress, and taking those things upon him. He he wants to take that upon Himself and be a light for you. And He entered into that to do that. That's the good news of the Gospel. It's a hope we have through His, through his body, through His incarnated body. In the same way He took the cup, He said, this is the cup of My new covenant. The shed blood. Through My shed blood, I, I, I provide forgiveness. That in this new covenant that you're able to walk with Me in freedom and grace, that no matter what you've done, maybe you've done something so wrong that the darkness that's in your life, you caused it. You did cause it to happen. But He gives you grace and it's okay. That He'll still shine a light for you to find your way home. And so we have these two elements to remind us of, of Jesus' humanity, that He loves us, that He gave His life for us, and He shed His blood and that we are forgiven. And so He invites us to partake. He said every time you eat and drink of it to remember Him until He comes. And so let us... Uh, take the bread, let us dip it into the cup. 
And let us remember his sacrifice. Let me pray. God, we thank you for your life through your son Jesus Christ, that he entered into our pain, that he is not surprised by what is going on today. He is not surprised by our emotions and what we're feeling. We thank you that he felt those same emotions, that he understands what we're going through. And God, we're thankful that he provides a light for us to find our way home, that he provides freedom, he provides grace. God, we thank you for the grace we get. That even if uh, we mess up, we screw it up, or we don't have the right elements at home to partake in communion, that you still love us and you still give us grace. And so God, let us partake together, let us eat together as the body of Christ, and let us join uh, with all the saints proclaiming uh, your love through your shared meal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us partake together. May the love of God be the oceans that you sail on, and the grace of God bring you calm and stormy days. May the word of God guide you to your destination, and the breath of God speed you safely on your way, and may his light always and forever guide you home. Amen. Well, that concludes our time of worship together. I trust that you got to experience God in a new way through this digital platform. We're thankful that we're able to still communicate in this way. We're thankful for those of you that jumped on. Uh, we'd love for you to chat with us on Zoom for a few moments after service, just to say hi to your friends and, and those you haven't seen in, in some time. Until If you don't join us for that, uh, hopefully we'll see you soon online, digitally, and we'll be praying that this quickly subsides so we can be back together here in this sanctuary, uh, praising God in person, shaking each other's hands, and we will celebrate hard when we're able to meet back here again. God bless.